Welcome to Toro NSN's Training in 10, the innovative self-paced training module that allows you to get trained and to get going. Today's topic is adding new programs to Cypro. While this presentation is focused on Cypro 2.0 versions and higher, the principles we will see today will apply to all versions of the software. This training module will cover topics including identifying what a program is, how to build the program structure, the different colors of program indicators and what they mean, where to go to learn about adding stations to programs, and other future training intent options designed to help you become a better manager of your Toro Site Pro system. We'll begin today by identifying just exactly what a program is. A program is a user-defined item that runs a series of stations as a single unit and is made up of a single schedule or of multiple schedules. In SitePro, programs are typically used for running irrigation. The program itself has a defined structure that must be built and managed in order for it to function properly. When building a program, you may find it helpful to remember WHW or when, how, and what. When meaning when the program will run, how for how long that program will run, and W for what time the program will start. To begin the process of writing a new program, we need to go to the program screen in Cypro located in the setup menu. There are two tabs in the program screen, programs and start times. We will begin in the program tab. On the top left of the program screen, you will see a pull-down list of all the programs that have been written. Notice that the first choice in this program list is a blank line. Choose this blank line and type in the name of the program that you would like to create. As you can see here, we are creating a new program called Clubhouse. Once you have typed the name of the program in, you must press the Enter key on your computer keyboard. Once you have done this, you have officially created the new Clubhouse program. This is a very important step in the program creation process and failure to do so could create problems later on. Now that we've created this program, we need to tell Cypro how it will operate and this is where WHW comes in. We enter the parameters for this new program in these sub-tabs across the bottom of the screen and in the Start Time tab on top. The first tab that information is required is the Schedule tab. Here is where we will identify this first W when the program will run. Your choices here are a 14-day calendar, interval where you enter how many days in the cycle and how often each cycle runs, odd days, even days, or you can even identify all of the active and inactive days for the next 365 if you know that far in advance. For our Clubhouse program, I am choosing a 14-day calendar, and once I have done so, my next step is to go to the Active Days sub-tab and identify the days that I want active in the next 14-day cycle. The bottom of the program screen shows the active days for the next seven beginning with the current date. You can see here in this example that as I make one of the next seven active, the box on the bottom also turns green. When we review our WHW, you will now see that we've identified when the program will run. Our next step is to set up how long the stations in this program will run, and we will do so in the ETU sub-tab on the bottom. On the left of this screen, you can see that there are three different options for runtime calculation. The first choice here is a user-defined runtime, and this is where you tell the program how long to run and every station in that program runs for that amount of time. Choice two is for ET Auto Adjust. This also uses a default runtime, but Cypro automatically adjusts that runtime based on two differing ET values. For most people who are looking to use ET, they will choose ET Auto Calculate. This option creates a runtime based on the desired ET application and the rate that the sprinklers are applying the water. For our clubhouse program, we are going to use a user-defined runtime. It's very important to not only tell Cypro to do this, but you must tell the software what that runtime will be in the default runtime section. Failure to do this will create problems later as you attempt to assign stations to this program. After completing this, you have now defined how long your program will run. 
The two remaining sub-tabs on the bottom are for the repeats and soaks and auto switch features. Repeats and soaks allow you to repeat every station assigned to the program up to three times with a space of up to 60 minutes maximum. A repeat divides your total runtime, creating multiple cycles. Be prudent when using this tool because it is very easy to create one or two minute cycles on a program with repeats when you combine them with percent adjusts. For information regarding the auto switch feature, please refer to Toro's Training in 10 module, Setting Up and Using Switches. Now that we've completed identifying how long the program will run, let's work on this last W, what time the program will start. For this, we are going to leave the program screen and go to the start time screen. On the left of the screen, you will see all of the starts and the programs assigned to the different starts detailed. To add our new clubhouse program to an existing start time, such as the water all time here, which is already defined on the right hand side, we simply click on the name of the start time and go to the Systems Program sub tab on the bottom right. In this window are all of the programs that have been written in the previous Programs tab. Here you will notice our new Clubhouse program. By clicking on this new program and with the Water All Start selected, you can now press the Add Program icon located here and our new Clubhouse program is part of the Water All sequence. Programs can be added to multiple sequences and will run their given runtime in each sequence that they are assigned to. To add a brand new start time sequence for this program, we simply click the Add Sequence icon located here and then fill in the attributes for this start on the right hand side of the screen. We begin by giving this new sequence a name. We now need to determine if the sequence is going to stop at, start at, and we'll also determine when it will stop or start. This first pull down selection is to start the sequence, stop the sequence, or disable the sequence. While start at is self explanatory, stop at is a bit different. When choosing stop at, SitePro automatically creates a start time so that all of the stations end at the moment you specify. Stop at sequences take priority over any other sequence running, and only one sequence can be labeled with a stop at in any one night cycle. For our example, we will choose a start at. The next pull down selection requires us to choose when this start time will begin, and we can choose either sunrise, sunset, or a specific time. Sunrise and sunset require that you've accurately told the software your location via latitude and longitude. The choice of specific time, which is the most commonly used choice, requires that you actually choose a time that you want your sequence to start. This is done using a 24 hour clock. Once again, when we have our sequence identified, you will need to go to the program list and add the program to the start time. Failure to do this will mean that the pre have not finished our WHW identification and that the program will not run because it is not structured properly. Speaking of program structure, you will notice that the start time list of all the programs have colored water drops next to them. Think of these colors as reflecting the program structure or our WHW tool. Green indicates that the program structure is proper and that all of the stations will run. Blue indicates that the program is inactive. This could be caused by not assigning any active dates to the program during the setup process or some programs you may not want to be active every day. And that's exactly what's going on with our mounds program here. Red indicates that the program has been disabled. The program will not run, and in the case of LTC 8000 or VP, the program is not downloaded to the satellite. As with everything else in Cypro, be sure that once you've completed your tasks, you save your work by exiting the screen using the OK button. You have now written a new program, and you have properly set up this program structure using W2HW. We've defined when the program will run, how long the program will run, and you have just completed defining what time the program will start. So to review what we've completed so far, we've identified what a program is, we've learned how to build the program structure using the WHW, we have learned about the color coding of the program, and you have already learned how to add stations to programs if you have watched the Training in 10 module, adding stations to satellites and programs. 
In this module, we review when you learn how to add stations to programs so that your new programs execute properly. Remember, a program is useless unless you have identified what stations are going to be part of that program. Well, there you go. You have just spent 10 minutes completing another episode of NSN's Training in 10. Today's topic has been adding new programs to Cypro. We hope that this Training in 10 lesson was helpful for you to better understand this function of the software and that it helps you further enhance your career working with the number one irrigation central control product available, Toro Cypro. Be sure to keep looking for future installments of NSN's Training in 10, the self-paced training module that allows you to get trained and to get going. If you have any questions about this or about future training module releases, or if you would like to participate in one of our acclaimed Toro Cypro regional training classes, please contact us by calling 888-676-8676, option 2. Once again, that's 888-676-8676, option 2. Toro and Toro's National Support Network. Count on it. Yeah.